Um, I want to welcome you all this morning. I want to welcome those who are listening from home and those who are joining in worship in their comfort of their own armchairs, um, as well as those are within the church building and also those who'll be listening later. So we're covering all bases there, I think. But it's lovely to see you all. I'm Ruth Johnson, and my husband, Barry Johnson, have been invited to lead the service this morning. So I hope you'll join in with us. First of all, we have a psalm which is coming up on the screen, and I'd like us all to stand, and I will read the verses, and if you will respond with the bit that says, all, that would be great. Thank you. Could we have the lights so that people can see? Thank you. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. We come to worship God. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. We come to worship God. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. God, our creator and sustainer, we are yours and we worship you. Let's sing together, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Isaiah chapter 40 reminds us that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So whilst we're sitting in a prayerful frame of mind, please, can we sing the next song together? Be still. <clears throat> God, thank you for this day and the opportunity we have to join together with you this morning. Some of us have arrived from a quiet home and are looking forward to your company and the company of friends here in church. Some have come from a busy, noisy home and are pleased to sit and have time quietly in your presence. Some of us want to give thanks for the joys of this week whilst we acknowledge others have heavy hearts, sadness, health worries, economic or family concerns. And at this moment, we each bring our concerns and joys to you. Lord, we want to thank you. You, you are our loving Heavenly Father, and we know you are here, ready to meet with each one of us, your children. Thank you for your immense love, Please accept our worship this morning. Amen. note. Hands up if you haven't got a post-it note and we'll try and get them round to you very quickly. You should have a post-it note and something to write on it with. Could we organise it please so we can get that done? Post-it notes are a fantastic invention. 
Did you know it started off in 1968 when Dr. Spencer Silver was attempting to develop a really super strong adhesive. Instead, he came up accidentally with a low tack, reusable, pressure sensitive adhesive. He took it round everywhere and couldn't raise any interest anywhere until in 1974, another inventor called Arthur Fry saw the potential for the use of this adhesive. He was having problems sticking his bookmark and keeping it in the right place in his hymn book. And he thought, wow, what a great idea. Put some of that on the back and I can stick it on and it'll stay there or I can move it around and it'll stay on the next page. And so he developed this idea, took a little bit longer to get there, until eventually in 1980, um, 3M launched these magic little stickers called post-its. Amazing little things they are, as long as they stick on properly. So, for this morning's service, what I'd like you to do on there is just, it's a label, so we're going to do something on there. I'd like you to write on there something about your identity, something about your personality. Just one word or two words in one word. What labels you? You know, what label could you stick on saying, this is me, I am this? Yeah, don't take too long about it because it's not meant to be that serious. So just write on whatever you think would identify you. And then when you've done it, stick it on somewhere on your clothes. Stick it on. Somebody said to me they didn't want it stuck there so that people could go around reading it afterwards. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can stick it on your back if you want, if it'll stay, or anywhere, or under your arm. Or that's fine, Trevor. Yeah, on your knee is really good. So, that's the first type of label. So, we'll come back to that a little later on. There are loads of labels that guide us through life. Joey, that's excellent. I did that to a guitar class the other day in school. And I had it on before they came in. It was my visitor's sticker. It wouldn't stay on. So I put it on my head right in the middle. And it took till the 23rd person getting their guitar tuned to say, why have you got a sticker sticking on your head? So it's interesting how what people notice. Anyway, food labels, lovely. Lots of them around. We've, we've got some on here. Mike, could we have a slide up as well so that we can see what we're doing up here? Different types of, different types of labels. Um, if we look, oh, this is a very good one. We've got a label up here, Mike. There we are. Anybody used to seeing those sort of labels? They appear, so here on my big box of Weetabix is the traffic lights color-coded labels, which tell you how many percent there are of fat, saturates, sugars, and salt. Some people have to watch that very carefully when they're choosing food. I know that um, before I was diagnosed with a type 2 diabetes a number of years ago, didn't worry me these things. Now, I take ages while we're shopping, going around and checking out. Is it, ooh, no, that's far too high. Ooh, I, I, I can't do that. So we've, we've got those. Others are more important, with, are more interested in other things which come on. It's on the back of this one, so I might as well keep using the same one. So on the back, we have, next slide, please, the nutrition labels. How much energy is in there? Again, fatuous, but, but it starts isolating putting it down into more detail on things like that. So we've got things like that. And then sometimes, third slide please. Nowadays we're very much aware of allergies. So when you go into shops, some people who've got allergies need to watch out on their labels for things that would warn them about things that are in that product that they don't actually want to use and would be, wouldn't be any good for them. Now, clothes labels. Clothes labels. Here we are. Inside a sort of t-shirt or a shirt, you find things. Can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. So this one's got the maker in and the size. I'll not tell you what the size is. So we'll keep going around there and ignore that bit. Um, this is obviously a much slimmer one with a sign on as well and, and size product details. Gives you instructions for washing. Um, if you look on there, on the, on the ones I've got on the screen there, you can see all the different things there that are very 
you have to think about when you're washing it. And I suppose if you went into a clothes shop um, and saw a sale label, you'd actually dash for that one straight away. Um, you also, it also can tell you whether the product is a good product or not. So if you look at the one, if you, those of you who can see the one down in the far corner, can see the word clean is spelled C-L-D-A-N, dry clean only, and do not bleach. They've done it twice, B-L-E-A-C-H and then B-L-E-E-C-H, just to make sure. I'm not too sure that that is a pucker product. I think if you go to a market, you might get one. Um, so we've got all of these things. Most food and clothing um, usually contain the following. Can you put it next slide up, please? So you probably have a product name, a description, ingredients, quantity, size, price, use by or best by date, directions for use, manufacturer. If you go to some products, for example, this one, you will see this is Vanish, five times the ben benefits of vacuuming. That sounds, that sounds good as an advert. In practice, I don't know. Um, but on the back, it's got extremely inflammable aerosol, pressurized container, may burst if heated. <laughs> you have to read these things to find out what, what, they, what, they, what they say. Um, here are some other wonderful ones. Um, some of these warning labels are often quite obvious. Um, here's one that was on a dishwasher. Do not allow children to play in the dishwasher. <laughs> or on an iron. Never, never iron clothes. Why? That's a good one for the men. Um, <laughs> we'll stop that. No, never, never iron clothes while they are being worn. <laughs> Bit dangerous. Or here's one for especially the, the younger ones. If you have a Superman costume out there. Here was a warning put on one of them. Warning, cape does not enable user to fly. <laughs> or a portable stroller, one of these lovely things that, that tiny tots go around in to help them walk. Caution, remove in infant before folding for storage. <laughs> Microwave, here's an even better one. Do not use for drying pets. <laughs> Next two are fairly obvious ones which even adults look at and go, oh, really? Wet paint. Don't need to say anything else, do you? But somebody is guaranteed to touch it. Just, just to see, just to see if it's right. Or even worse, work, walking in the countryside, I can remember this with um, our youngsters, especially number three. Um, electric fence. Do not touch. No, don't. Okay. Labels. We wear all the time. I'm on holiday. I've decided. I've got my holiday shirt on today, so I'm on a break from my usual teaching. Um, T-shirts, could we have the next slide up, please? That's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully some people be, will be wearing that sort of England shirt with um, face paint of England this afternoon. There are lots of children, I know one especially who wanders around most of the time in the Spider-Man costume. Um, so Spider-Man costume or Captain America. Um, for Formula One fans, a Formula One flag, which is past giant ones, which are passed round. And for those who watch films, there are t-shirts like um, Minions Rock, which is on the front, or Jurassic Park. I have a number of shirts which I display from time to time. I couldn't decide which one to wear this morning. So this, this one says, I sorry, Mark, I support Newcastle United Football Club. Excellent. That's the one, thank you. Excellent. Um, this other one? says, I love playing the guitar and have done for many years. So, and this one, which I found, which is an old souvenir one, this one says, tuba power, 
Oompa strikes back. I took part in a thing in, <laughs> yes, exactly. I took part in there, and I, you'll find my name on the back. I took part in a big thing for North Hans Music Services when I was across there, and they tried to get as many tuba players together as possible um, to play in one place. Um, sometimes, we might as well wear all three at once because we're, we're doing all three things, so it's, it's quite interesting. But we have all these different things. So, on the screen, another picture, please. So, this perhaps tells, says something about you. Um, two pictures on here, one showing somebody dressed in casual dress and one which, says, which has somebody dressed in smart business dress. Which do you prefer? Do, what does it say about you, your way, the way that you dress? What about the next one? Let's look at this. Next slide. There we are. Tells us about our music preferences, I think. The way, again, T-shirts, just like I've got one there for you supporting Nirvana. There's a really old picture of John Lennon with Beatles merchandise behind him. Um, and one for all for one choir, so choirs would tend to wear t-shirts. I know younger choirs wear t-shirts, identifying them with that group. Um, if you're in an orchestra, you might have to wear um, a performance suit, including a white shirt, dicky bow, uh, black dinner suit. Or if you're in a church choir, you might wear long robes. Next one, please. There's a lot about politics happening at the minute. Um, so it's sometimes during the election, I'm sure two years time, you'll see a lot of what's appearing on here now. These are four different color rosettes representing the different parties, red, blue, yellow, and green. So you will know which party, but if people go around wearing those, they say something about your politics. On to the next one, please. Here we have reading material. So we've got a person reading The Sun, another person reading The Guardian. I could have gone on ad nauseum with daily papers. Oh, there's The Times there as well. Dennis the Menace from the Beano. Magpie um, talking about computer language and computer control or vegan cookbook. If we came across you in your house, um, what you read, your papers, your magazines may say something about you. Same going back with music, you know, in your CD collection, what music you have on at home. It's an identity, it's a label. And then finally, do we prefer tea? or coffee? Do we prefer Pepsi-Cola or Coca-Cola? <laughs> Thank you. Which, what, again, what does it say about this? It says something about our, our tastes is as well. Many of us would label ourselves as Christians. Did any of you write that on your post-it? I'm not going to check, just asking the question. So, we label ourselves as Christians, but when was this label of Christian first used? Ruth will tell us about it. Acts chapter 11. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians, and that was first at Antioch. So the new disciples were taught about Christianity, about the 
growing religion, about the promises of God that he made to everyone. So if you'd like to stand and sing with us, we're going to sing a song by Keith Getty and Stuart Townsend, Every Promise. So, like it or not, we are all labeled. Some of those descriptions are true, while others will be false. Let's go back to the product descriptor we looked at earlier and see how we could use that to guide our thinking on what it means to be a Christian. So, the first thing we looked at was the product name, the name of Christian. It's first and foremost a follower of Christ, someone who follows Christ's direct, personal, unambiguous teachings. Following the teachings of Luther, Calvin, Wesley, Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, or the Pope may all be fine, but that should not be the primary focus. A Christian is first and foremost a follower of Christ. Product description. So, what's the description of Christian 
that best fits this label. When we study the Gospels, we see that Jesus taught the essentials of Christianity, not the side issues. He taught nothing about worship music, liturgical calendars, dancing, religious garb, or position of hands while praying. But he did teach plenty about the kingdom of heaven, plenty about how to love God and how to love our neighbors, including our enemies. And many of his ideas were contrary to the popular religious beliefs of the day. Ingredients. What ingredients is there of a Christian? Some of you will know these old rhymes. What are little boys made of? What are little boys made of? Frogs and snails and puppy dogs' tails. That's what little boys are made of. What are little girls made of? What are little girls made of? Sugar and spice and all things nice. That's what little girls are made of. Really? <laughs> Scientists would have a totally different opinion. Another slide, please. On this, here we go, we find that we're made up of 64% water, 20% protein, 10% fat, some of us perhaps a bit more, 1% um, carbohydrate and 5% minerals. You know, there are many lists in the Bible of ingredients that describe a Christian. I suppose the most important one is saved or we could call it converted. Jesus also described other ingredients like good works. Serving the needy, hospitality, humility, to name a few. In other words, faith in action. Paul describes ingredients that the Holy Spirit brings. Love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The interesting thing about ingredients is that they can't always be seen by other people just looking at us. Have a look at your own label and you'll see what I mean. It often again goes back to faith in action. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I have a banana, not because I'm hungry. Did you know, did you know that there is an angel in the middle of a banana? You may look at me with quizzical faces, but hopefully I will prove to you in a second. There is an angel in the middle of a banana. That was one I made earlier, but I'm going to go for a new cut. See if it works. Oh, it works brilliantly. Here we go. You look totally disbelieving. <laughs> How could you? How could you? Look. There's its body. There's its legs. There's its wings. Ah. Ah. Right one. There's its body, there's its legs, there's its wings. Yeah, not too sure. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Who was screwing up her face when she didn't believe me? So, it does, it's just hidden in the middle. So there's the body, there's the legs, there's the wings. And there's the face in the middle. Ah, yes, yes, yeah. 
Alan, you look totally disbelieving. It, it is there. Body, body, legs, wings. Yeah, it looks like a fly, actually. <laughs> Which also has similar things. So that's good. That's good. So, angel in the middle of a banana. You know, there's an angel in each one of us. Some of us are not very keen to let it out at times. Other of us show things. It's the inside which counts. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. People look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So there's only one song we can sing after that. Shine from the inside out. Have I got any people who would like to lead with action? I thought I would have. Would you like to come up then and you can do the actions? Brilliant. And I'll get my guitar and let's see how we go. Yeah, this is good. Thank you. Can we have the words on the screen, please? And if everybody likes Stein, please um, follow. We will sing Shine from the Inside Out. Shine from the Inside Out. Sit down, thank you very much. Give the youngsters a round of applause. Thank you. We move on to the use before or best before date. There's some discussion about which word means what, but never mind. That is, so we're trying to think of what is the best use or sell by date for that matter um, for a Christian. And I think it's already answered for us very quickly in the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13. We're going to illustrate it for the young people with a video on the board. Hope everybody else enjoys it. And we'll watch and learn about the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came. And ate it up. 
Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns. They grew, but the thorns also grew and choked them. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and this deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. So, directions for use. What use are Christians? Well, Christians can be used for encouragement to encourage others, to give help in times of need, to lead in intercessory prayer for others, the whole world, for giving reliable Bible-based wisdom and advice. Some are given specialized gifts like music or translation or teaching or community leadership. All of these things, different ways, and not everybody will have the same direction for use. Each will be individual, each will be different. Just get up and speak without a set of notes. I, I just can't do that. But I've learned over the years that in testimonies, we don't always have to do that because there are songs that have been written down through the years and lots today that are still being written that are really helpful and express what's in our heart, sometimes what's on our minds, um, that we can share with others. And there's an old song which I really like, and this is an opportunity to sing it, Blessed Assurance. And I'd like us to sing this, and if during the singing of this song, there's a positive line of encouragement that comes to you that you would like to share this morning, then Mark, will you be ready with the microphone to go to anyone who raises their hand after this song and share that with us? A positive short sentence that may encourage another this morning but in the meantime let's stand and sing this song together it's an old one but I think it's a good one Blessed
So the line that struck me was born of his spirit washed in his blood because you know there's nothing that we can do that causes us to be in fellowship with Jesus and because we are we know where we're going because we're washed in his blood. Thank you Lord. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Dorothy at the back please. I chose for us to sing this hymn at my baptism. 69 years ago wow. and the Jesus that I claimed to be my saviour then has kept me through all those years praise his name Amen. Amen. 69 years that's an, a wonderful record <laughs> anybody else this morning Maureen at the front please The bit that um, struck me was all is at rest. I and my Saviour am happy and blessed when there are people around who are so concerned and worried about everything, but Jesus gives us that peace. Yes, thank you. Don't want to miss anybody out otherwise. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Kathy's going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Thank you. Right, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very grateful to Lorraine for helping me this morning with our prayers. And isn't it wonderful that as Christians, we have that label of Christian that makes us part of this worldwide family that means that we can share in prayer for things that are close to home, but things that are much, much further afield. And uh, for our prayers this morning, we're going to focus on three key areas. So we're going to pray for the Falcon Camp being held at Carroty Wood. Our pastor is not here this morning because he and his wife are leading uh, that camp for children who otherwise wouldn't have a holiday. And then we're going to uh, respond to uh, a BMS uh, World Mission appeal for prayer today uh, for countries that are really suffering from the global uh, cost of living rise and maybe like me as you look at the world with so many needs it's easy to feel a bit overwhelmed by the scale of the problems but BMS have asked us to pray for three countries in particular for Uganda where 41% of the population live in poverty and almost half of the population is under 15 Lebanon, a country which has received refugees from Palestine and Syria, and where four in five people are considered poor. And Nepal, a landlocked country where the mountains make dif development and transportation difficult. 
and which also has a corrupt government. And then our third area of prayer is about Castle Hill Baptist Church being a beacon of hope and how next Sunday we can open our, our doors for the Commonwealth Games. So, let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the Falcon to Camp taking place at Carity Wood this week. Thank you for the 17 leaders who are helping the children to have this fun-packed week. Please help them to work together and guide Luke and Rachel, Kevin and Joy as they work as leaders. Please bless all of the volunteers with good sleep at night. We ask too that you would help the children to have lots of fun and not to be anxious about being away from home. May they sleep well at night as well. Please keep everyone safe during this week in their activities and travel and free from COVID too. And may all who are taking part learn something new about Jesus. May it be a week that changes people's lives. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now we pray for those in the world who are suffering from the cost of living crisis. You might like to open your eyes and look at the screen as there will be some uh, photographs and information to help you. Ukraine is nicknamed the world's breadbasket. It's estimated that a, 50 that a staggering 50% of the world's sunflower oil and 20% of the world's maize and 30% of the world's barley and wheat come from Ukraine. When instead of growing crops, Ukraine has been forced into growing armies. It's not surprising that this has had a devastating effect on vulnerable nations across the world. Dear Lord, we pray for BMS World Mission Worker, Benin Kayanja, who writes from Uganda in Africa with news of fuel prices going up, of the sharp increase in the prices of everyday products, and of Ugandans struggling to make ends meet. We join him in praying for hope, for better days, and for a return to normal life. We pray too for our partners in Lebanon, who tell us that the conflict in Ukraine is already worship, worsening the humanitarian needs in their region and deepening the food crisis they've been going through. The country has started rationing wheat only allowing it to be used for bread. And people have started stockpiling wheat and yeast as well as sunflower oil. We pray that the people who are hungry in Lebanon will be fed and that our partners can be your hands and feet in the region. Dear Lord, we pray too for our partners in Nepal where Deep Deepak Raj Rai tells us that the cost of basic foodstuffs is going up every week and that their redevelopment projects are becoming more and more expensive as the price of materials and fuel show no sign of coming down. We pray that those on the margins in Nepal will be provided for and that a solution can be found. Father God, thank you for the events like the Commonwealth Games, which allow us to celebrate our diverse cultural experiences and the joy of taking part in sport. We pray especially today for the cycle events taking place in Warwick next Sunday. Please help the organisers of the Commonwealth Games to assure this event can be safe. Protect the riders, officials and spectators from harm and enable everyone involved to enjoy the occasion. As we open the doors of our building, we pray that people will be able to come in. May they find in this place a friendly welcome, kind words and good hospitality. Bless our conversations and may the experience be one who helps our visitors to enjoy their day even more. Thank you for all those who, who are making cakes and giving up their time. Please help us as a church to be a beacon of hope on that day and every day. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, just to say that um, 
BMS are uh, launching an appeal. Um, we voted at the, or we agreed at the church meeting um, that we would make Nepal um, one of the charities that we would be supporting uh, at our harvest appeal, which will be, um, I think, in October. Uh, but in the meantime, if you wanted to give individually, then on the screen it shows you what difference um, that giving would make to the different situations. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last thing on our label that we usually find, inside clothes or whatever, is the name and place of manufacture. So, as Christians, here the focus is on who gives the name Christian and where does he come from? As mentioned earlier, first and foremost, the label name Christian means of Christ. It doesn't refer to any particular denomination or any particular Christian leader. And our citizenship is therefore first and foremost in heaven, which is where Jesus came from in order to save us before returning there to be with his Father. There's nothing wrong with being a loyal and thankful citizen of any country, but earthly citizenship is a distinct second to heavenly citizenship. Likewise, there's nothing wrong in loving a particular denomination, its culture, its liturgy. However, we must always remember that the church of God is diverse and encompasses a wide variety of denominations, cultures, and liturgy. Well, we've also found out this morning that labels stick. You've just shown me your labels stick on you really well. Unfortunately, some labels stick and aren't easily removed, especially negative ones, and especially given to you by others. If you've been listening to anything of the conservative leadership debate, you can't have failed to notice them throwing labels at each other based on their past behavior and history. Have you noticed as well how hard it is to get some extra clothing label off? You know the tags when you go into the shops and they just leave them on and you drag them off? Scissors, it takes ages to get them off. It's a bit like that. You can remove them. It's tough, but it's possible. However, if you believe these negative labels and take them on board, they can really limit what you do and what you are able to achieve. For example, school reports. I remember mine. Too lazy, won't do anything. Prefers playing football or his guitar. Won't go anywhere. Fine. Or exam results or gossip overheard. He's not like the previous person in that job. It's dreadful. Oh, it'll take ages for him to settle in. Here are a couple of examples where Jesus has to correct people for wrongly labeling people due to their previous behavior. First, if we look in John chapter 4, verses 3 to 10, we see that Jesus asks a Samaritan woman for a drink. She was actually horrified, seemed to think that giving a drink to a Jew, Jesus, was, was forbidden. She couldn't do it. And Jesus had to correct her. In Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50, we find Jesus' feet being washed by a woman with a really dubious past when visiting Simon the Pharisee. Simon was very quick to label her based on her past history rather than on current generous act that she was giving that day. And Jesus gently corrected him. or you too will be judged for in the same way as you judge others you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye how can you say to your brother let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time 
there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. But the good news is that these labels can be refused. You can refuse them or you can even remove them quite easily. Here's a school report on somebody. Too stupid to learn anything, wasn't me. Not that one. Thomas Edison went on to become one of the most successful inventors ever, the phonograph, practical electric light. More modern inventor, James Dyson, might have given up right at the start when he was trying to get this vacuumless hoover. He actually worked through 5,126 prototypes over 15 years, that's an average of 342 a year, before his best-selling vac bagless vacuum cleaner was actually accepted for sale and distribution. He was a job assessment um, for an employee of a newspaper after which he was sacked. Lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Walt Disney. <laughs> Following a first gig, one young singer was told, you ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck. Elvis Presley. Now, here's something which is interesting. Going to war a captain and returning a private, followed by a whole host of business failures, must have given that person a whole load of negative labels. But then Abraham Lincoln went on to be president of the USA. Who knows? Winston Churchill, Richard Branston, J.K. Rowling, Lady Gaga, Charles Darwin, Albert Einstein, they all have similar stories of labels which people put on them when they were younger, which they refused and took away. God doesn't have any negative labels for you. When people say, you're not clever enough, you're too small, you're too quiet, you're just average. Don't let ne negative labels hold you back. You have been made in the image of God. In the Psalms it says, you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Take off the failure, the guilt, washed up, condemned labels and put on some new labels, redeemed, restored, forgiven, a bright future, new beginning. And this is what David had to do when the prophet Samuel came to anoint one of his father's sons as the next king of Israel. The story is in 1 Samuel 16. Jesse, his father, didn't even bother to bring David in from the fields where he was taking care of the sheep. Jesse thought, I know it's not David. He's too small, too young, not that talented, not as smart as his brothers. David had all these negative labels put on him by his own father. So Samuel looked at Jesse's seven sons and said, not this one, 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 not this one. And he ran out. So he said to Jesse, do you have any other sons? Because it's none of these. Jesse said, well, yeah, my younger son, David, he's out in the fields, but I know it's not him. David walked in. Samuel took one look at him and said, he's the one. That's the next king of Israel. Right there and then, David had to make a decision to remove the negative labels he'd been given and been used to hearing from his own family and to put on new ones that the creator of the universe, the God who breathed life into him, gave him. Giant killer, more than conqueror, destined for greatness to become king of Israel. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We're going to have a little quiz to finish with just to wake you up a little bit. Um, so on screen will appear various names. There we are, if we can see from that. I'll read them out anyway. See if you can tell me what comes next. Attila the... Well done, Attila the Hun. Conan the... Barbarian. Wow, we're good at this. 
Billy the, oh great, we're going to go faster. Buffy the, wonderful. Popeye the, Winnie the, don't know how she got that one. <laughs> Robert the, Edward the, you're so good at this. William the, Jude the, Minnie the, Oh, no, many the minx. Ooh. Ivan the terrible. So, if you had to rewrite your label, which you put on, what would you put on? Your name, whoever it is. The. I hope that you'd enter Christian. Or at least one of the characteristics that we looked up earlier of a Christian. By what we say and by what we do, we need to identify to the world as followers of Christ. We need to let his love shine through us so that people see Jesus in us. It gives us a living hope, something that is really positive to base our lives on, to be a beacon of hope in the world. Next slide, please, Mike. Paul knew all about it, and this was the label he put on. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not some things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A terrific label to put on as we move into a new week. To finish our service, Here's a song that asks Jesus to come into our lives and in the words of verse 3, for our lives to mirror Jesus' story on a daily basis. Shine, Jesus shine. Would you like to stand and sing?
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we belong to you. We thank you that you are in our lives from day to day, helping us to become better individuals, helping us to become better Christians, helping us to become better representatives for you. Lord, if we still have any negative feelings in our lives, please help us to remove them. Work your Holy Spirit within us to create in us a new person, wholly acceptable to you, that can help from day to day to expand your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we thank you for loving us so much. Be with us this week as we go out. Help us to be beacons for you in the world. We ask this in through your son's name, Jesus. Amen.